So you want to make a cool slow motion or speed up effect, but you don't know how. In this video, I'm showing you two ways to slow down time in Godot. The first technique is very simple and only one line. The second one is a bit more involved, but allow for more precise control. So let's get started. I've made this simple demo to show how both methods can work on different objects in Godot. I've got a kinematic and rigid body, a timer, some particles, a tween and an animation player. This should cover all your basic needs. With the first method, it's pretty simple. You call engine.timescale equals some value, like 0.05, and the whole game will run at 0.05x speed. Everything is affected. As you can see, the timer, the particles, the rigid body, and even the delta is smaller. To go back to normal, simply use engine.timescale equals 1. Be careful though, make sure to revert back to 1 before changing scene or reloading a level. Because we're touching directly the engine, a new scene won't reset the timescale. This is the simplest solution, but you have no control on what is being affected. If you only want your player to go slower while the rest of the physics is still running, or you want to keep timers and effects running normally, it's not possible. That's where the second solution is useful. The second method is to direct directly control the timescale for each object. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that for the kinematic body, the particles, the tweeting, the animation player and finally the timer. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that for the rigid body, at least that I'm aware of. If you have a solution for that, please leave a comment below. Slowing down a kinematic body is pretty simple. Because its movement are based on delta, you just need to scale delta by your slowing factor. So if you want to half its speed, multiply delta by 0.5, and the movement will be two times slower. This is cool, because for example, you can run the physics process at half the speed, but keeps the effect and inputs in process at normal speed. Now for the particles. We're lucky there's a built-in way to affect speed by changing speed scale. We can even pose the particles by setting it to zero. Same thing for the tween. By changing playback speed, we change the tweening speed. And same as before, setting it to zero will pose the tweening. Another simple object to slow down is the animation player. You can directly set the playback speed property. And again, setting it to zero will pose the animation. The last object I'll show you is the timer. This one is a bit more complicated, but nothing too hard. There's no built-in playback speed, so we need to scale the time manually. First, we need to scale the remaining time of the timer when the slowdown function is called. For that, we stop the timer and set the wait time to the time that was left, scaled by the slow factor. We scale by 1 divided by slow factor because we want to make the time left bigger when going slower. When going back to normal, we use the old slow factor that we stored to scale back the time left. That's to scale the time left at the time of calling the slowdown function. But we need to change the normal wait time. For that, we are going to scale the wait time when the timer times out. We're doing the same thing but using the variable timer wait time, which is normal wait time of the timer. To display the time always in the range of 0 to 1, I'm scaling the time left by the slow factor. And with that, we successfully slowed down the timer. For rigid body, there's no way that I'm aware of to slow it down. It's because the calculations are made based on the delta value, and as we saw, the delta is not changing in our custom version. Okay, that's all for the video. I hope you find this interesting. If you have suggestions or questions, please feel free to comment down below. As always, the sources are available available on my GitHub link in the description. Thanks for watching, see you later, bye!